Hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> okay, this is, uh, I'm going to connect with my friend Laura. Let's see if I can find her. There she is. Okay. I invited her. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> Let's see if she'll come on. Mackenzie. Invite. Invite. Okay. Oh. Okay, guys, sorry about this. I got to figure this out. But anyways, I'm Jeanette Berksham. I'm an acrylic artist. And I am trying to invite my friend, Laura McKenzie, to join. And I don't know how to do it. And then you can see there. Okay. Okay, Laura. Oh, good. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Let me start in the same orientation. Let's be less confusing. Yeah, we did it. Fantastic. How are you doing, Jeanette? I'm doing awesome. Okay, everybody, this is my friend, Laura McKenzie from Hi. Miami, a fellow artist. We love our turquoise water. So she does the painting just like I do. And um, we um, thought it would be fun to talk. We both did an article. Edward Sylvan with Authority Magazine had done a series um, where he interviewed artists, asking them, what, do they, what are the five things they wish someone told them before they became artists? And both Laura and I did the interview. So we thought it would be fun to kind of come on live and talk to you guys about our answers. We're varied a little bit. So, but first I want Laura to introduce herself and tell you all about her. Hi, how are you? I'm Laura McKenzie of Laura McKenzie Gallery. I'm an artist who is completely in love with the beach and the water and nature. And <laughs> I've spent my entire adult life moving around the world. So I've lived near and on many beaches on many different seas and oceans and you can see every bit of that in the paintings that i create and jeanette is such a good art buddy and we're both really <laughs> passionate about sustainability and water and nature yes and ocean. yes we love yeah, that i'm excited to hang out with you for a bit today jeanette i know i just thought this would be fun i want to try to do this on a monthly basis just to awesome. um because i love talking to you guys so i just thought it'd be fun to talk to other artists in a live setting just so we could share and make it fun. Yeah. Okay, so no doubt. do you want to jump? We'll jump into what um, the five things that we talked about in our article and um, the one that I'm going to have Laura start with and then I'll tie mine in, into hers. But we, we thought like when I was just starting out, I really do wish someone had told me these things before I started because it would have made things a lot easier. Like I feel like they should make anybody that's going to art school like read these articles because <laughs> so, there's some about good points that a lot of people have made and there's a lot of articles. Oh, we'll also post the um, links to both our articles. I'll do that in the comments after um, the live goes finishes. Oh, and Laura, you're on a time, time crunch. So we have to keep Just it. Like, yep. I've got the camera. So we'll, I've got the mic camera. I have my clock up. So we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I know you and I could probably go on and talk for hours, but that would <laughs> seriously be testing the attention span, I'm sure, of anyone else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to listen yeah. to us for that long. So we'll just come back and do it again. Okay. But um, yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of these things that you and I talked about apply to life in general, not just to art. True. You know, True. so it's, you know, all those like young adult things that you don't realize until you're older, right? Yeah, <laughs> that, right. So that's why we wish somebody would have said it to us and then we would have at least had the idea. We may not have believed it, but we would have at least known it was out there. 
at least had some clue. I was pretty clueless when I was younger about a lot of things about life. So I, I'm sure I still am just yeah. different things in different ways. Well, talk about your, you said in your first one, you talked about going to art school and that you didn't have that sense of finding a community. So talk to us a little right. bit about your, your first one. Right. I had my friends and I guess, you know, you could say I had a community. I was around other people creating art. I had these amazing professors. I mean, they were just wonderful. And, you know, things were going great. I was painting. I was having fun. I was being put up for awards I didn't even know about. So, you know, having a lot of success, more or less, in the art school that I was in. But I thought I had to figure out my entire life on my own at that point. You know, I had, you know, at that time, we didn't have really the internet. I mean, I think email was a new thing, so I'm going to date myself there a bit. But, you know, it wasn't like just hop, you didn't go shopping online no. when I was in art school. You didn't, none of that was a thing. You didn't, you know, if you wanted to go somewhere, you had a paper map. Right. You know, at right. that time, it wasn't, you know, that. And I just, I had this idea in my head. I don't know why, but I thought I had to figure out my entire life on my own without any guidance, which was wildly, you know, just sad. And I missed an opportunity. I never thought about going into my professor's office and saying, hey, I really like art and I need to support myself and make a living. That's, what can I do? That's you know, do key. I need to find a gallery? You know, I was a young woman. I wasn't married. You know, I wasn't going to. I didn't have like a huge amount of funds. I wasn't independently wealthy. So, you know, I also did have to support myself and I never thought to ask, can I do that with art? Right. You know, they say in life, you should find the intersection of something you love doing, something that you're good at and something that you can get paid to do. Right. right. I never understood. I never even explored at the time right. how to make the third thing happen with art. And I was just, you know, I was really wasting opportunities. I was missing opportunities. And, you know, I think that applies not just to art. It applies to whatever you do in life. Yeah, Talk I do. To other people, let them know what you're doing and so forth. Yeah. yeah. And I do think with us, when we started out, we didn't have, like you said, we didn't have social media. So nowadays, no. you know, going into one of our, our, our um, five things was that um, you can make a living in so many ways now that you couldn't back when we were starting, basically you had to be sell at a gallery or I think you right. could still sell at art fairs. And those are like your right. two things. Now sure. you have the art licensing where you can do prints for fabrics. You can um, sell cards. You can make prints of your art. You can um, you do the NFTs, which I haven't done yet, but I'm thinking about it. Um, people are making money through uh, selling their NFTs. So there's just so much available to artists now that we didn't have when we started out. So <clears throat> I just think it's fabulous. But you're right about community. And um, I wanted to throw in one of my uh, five things was the fact that you don't have to go to art school. Like you went to art school. I went to art, going in under art, but then I went more practical and went graphic design, which I think a lot of artists do because like you said, you weren't sure how you were going to make a living. What did you end up doing after you graduated? I did everything. You know what I did immediately after I graduated? I moved to Italy and became an au pair for this really great family. <laughs> and that's what I did. I, was, I had also been studying Italian because Renaissance art and just loved it, art history. And I was like, well, I got nothing else I have to do. So I'm going to run off and go be an au pair for this family because I know I'll have a roof over my head and three meals a day and I'll really learn Italian. So yeah. I am not the most practical <laughs> with my life choices, but I'm so glad I did those things. Did you still paint when you were in Italy? Did you have time? Some, but not a ton, yeah. And just the space and being able to do the materials and stuff. It was more drawing and things like that while I was there and just experiencing, soaking in all the art there, right? right. I mean, right. we would just travel around Italy and look at masterpieces and, and it was just a dream come true. To be and are, you're, you're fluent in Italian? Yes. Although, you know, I'd say I'm rusty now. Now I speak Spanish on a daily basis. And so I'm sure, actually, one of my good friends here is Italian. And I have another very good friend um, who is Italian that I speak to 
as regularly as I can, but um, mostly in English. I'm sure if I just started, you know, doing Italian with them, it would take a little bit for my brain to like gears to slowly click over. But the cool thing about language is that it's still there. You'd, you know, if I decide to move to Italy in a few days, I'd be back in the flow. Yeah, that's cool. So what do you, what would you tell an artist now just graduating from art school? Like, what would you tell them to do? Yeah, definitely ask for advice, ask for help, ask for mentorship. I mean, that is so, you know, if we're, I mean, I think we're just sticking to kind of one of our five things, but uh -huh. you know, that's the biggest thing. And you talked about, you know, art today, the art world is so different. When you and I graduated art school, the only way to meet any of your collectors was like you said, the art fairs and the art mm -hmm. fairs are still there. The galleries are still there. There's mm -hmm. wonderful examples of both. Mm -hmm. And via the internet, we can go and actually get to know our collectors and get to interact with people a little more directly, which is such a benefit. Um, but I would say don't go it alone. Find somebody or somebody's yeah. to guide you. you know, yeah. I, I just don't, don't think you have to figure out your whole life yourself. Talk to people, be vulnerable, be open about what you're going through, what you're thinking. Well, I would, yeah, and I would yeah. say to that both of us met through another artist. So I would mm -hmm. say that nowadays, like I, my, one of my five things was you don't have to go to art school because mm -hmm. there is so much available on the internet now and so many great artists that are teaching. So besides just painting and, and do creating and constantly creating, you could take classes online and meet so many great people. And that's, yeah. that's one way. So you don't have to pay the money right now, or you can go to school and do this on the side till, you know, you create a following. But between yeah. Laura and I we were talking, the main thing is that connection and connecting with your collectors as well as I think with us, like, I think, contacting you and just talking about things that we need to do or you know have you done this have you tried that um it's been invaluable so yeah this does not have to be a lonely profession sure we mostly do it in our own studios right where we don't get together and hang out and paint together partially yeah. because you're in california and i'm in <laughs> miami but <laughs> but know. we would we'd go to the beach and we'd paint oh yeah <laughs> That would be fabulous yeah. for sure, you know, but it doesn't have to be lonely. We can connect via the internet. You can go to art school and take classes from fabulous artists online. And right. like, here's the thing, never stop learning. You're never just, oh, I learned about art. I'm done. I know everything there is to know. There's always a new technique, a new medium, a new something out there. Yeah. And locally in your local area there's probably something and you know if, if also then go online the possibilities are absolutely endless and it's exciting and yeah. it's a really really great time to be an artist yeah i think so too i think so much more than when we were first starting for sure so that's exciting right and yeah, then um, options were limited and now they're unlimited right which is difficult too now you have to wade through all the options and try them out or decide which one's for you but yeah yeah, and I wanted to say to a couple people that joined, hi, Aussie Mama, um, Grandman Ned Manetti joined us, and Bash, Batway Development joined us, Terry, hi, Terry, um, and Laura, I thank you guys so much for joining us, because this is kind of our, our first one that we're testing out, so we're having fun. Yeah, always. Yeah, it's we're big art nerds, and <laughs> I like to hang out and talk art, and sustainability and things that matter to us. Yeah. Definitely. So what would, what would be, I know we didn't talk about this, but what would be your next five, one of your five things that you would want to think? I think your be vulnerable one is a good one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's part of it. Who wants art that you didn't pour your soul into? Like this one here behind me, the, the lone person on the beach. I mean, we, that's, can't, we can't see her little redness. You can't see? Yeah. Okay. She's great. I love her. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, you know, minimalistic and simple. Um, but there's a whole lot of emotion and vulnerability poured in there too, you know, and you don't have to, I, I suffered from, you know, perfectionism and thinking I had to have, you know, everything together and appear. And that maybe went with not finding mentors early. You know, I thought I had to have everything together and figured out on my own, or there was something wrong with me. And 
that couldn't be further from the truth. Well, did so. you have a stigma when you went to art school? Like you had to go, like you had to be pure and you had to do it a certain way in order to be considered a true artist? I don't think I got that message from my instructors necessarily, but I think I put that on myself. Yeah, for okay. sure. Always worrying like, oh, is this fine art? Is it, you know, does it meet some external definition? But I don't know. I don't think you're going to find your joy if you're worried about those kinds of things. Well, one of mine you was, know, about you, well, one of mine was not following the trends because when you are trying to make a living from your art, it's very easy to see what someone else is doing that's successful and then think, oh, I got to paint like them to make it happen. But what happens is you just get on a hamster wheel and you, and it's not authentically you. And like you said, being vulnerable and doing art that's really coming from your heart is like such the key to making it happen. Now I have to say that with a caveat because I'm still working on finding my true authentic style and self. But I know the more I do it, the more it comes out and the more it feels authentically me so I, I know initially you know I would try things that other people were doing just to try and I would learn something from it but really right. to truly do what's coming from your heart that's authentically you that's when it's going to click with other people for sure right for sure. right and that's okay I mean some of our favorite artists in history learn by copying the master's paintings at museums right right but they didn't stay there they right. moved on and they found themselves and they found their own style and they, you know, they went beyond that. Maybe that's where they started and that's okay, you yeah. know, and then they went and they figured out where they were and where their heart is. And I think you have to share to find your style. You have to be willing to open up and, and just, you and know, have wrong. that connection with people. And, be vulnerable. and I think, you know, there is a spiritual connection between art, people who buy original art, it's not just because, you know, they do have a spiritual connection with it and they, they see a painting and they, wow, they connect with it on a very deep level. I don't think that can happen if you're not really putting yourself into it. I believe that to be true too. I totally believe that true. So I thought that was a good one that you talked about uh, of being vulnerable. Um, yeah, and then you said something else about, in yours, you talked about that art matters, because you had a story from a collector that you were surprised, like you were thinking, oh, I'm just doing seascapes, it's, you know, it's fun for me, but you had a story about that. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've had, you know, one thing I love about this art journey is just being able to connect directly with my um, collectors, you know, and hear their stories. And I've had so many people tell me, you know, this painting or that painting really connected with me and it transported me to another place in time. Mm -hmm. You know, it transported me to a place where I didn't maybe have a lot of peace in my life, but this one place, the, the ocean was where I found that peace and it just brought them right back to that maybe calm in the middle of the chaos or that uplifted feeling. I think the coolest thing about being in nature is that Yes, you feel tranquil, you feel relaxed, but you also feel uplifted and excited and energized. I don't really know how those go two go together, but I know they do. I know yeah. that's what you feel like at the beach, you know, and you just feel good all around. And so I've had people, you know, say that things connect with them on different levels. I've had collectors say that I have a painting called Layers, and that's what it's about, you know, the various layers of paint. She said, that's me. I am very layered. You know? <laughs> so, hearing that and hearing how that resonates with people very deeply yeah. is, is really important. And that's what really keeps you going, I think, as an artist, is knowing that your art does more than match your collector's couch. You know, for that's sure. That's why they're buying it. They're yeah. not buying it for the colors. They're buying it for that emotional connection. And I think you and I also talked about this, that art does bring a different energy into a room. Like if you're connecting with something and you have that on your wall, when people walk in, I think they feel that vibe and that whole energy around it and what you're bringing in to your home and your house. So um, if anybody that's watching us wants to ask a question to Laura or myself, just let us know. But um, we were having a lot of fun doing this. So um, Laura, is there any other, so I want you guys to, we'll put the links for the article so you guys can read because he also, Edward also interviewed us about a lot of like how um, 
some of like our background, like how we grew up and he had some interesting questions that he asked us. So it goes into more depth, but if you guys are interested to read the articles, we'll, we'll put those links in. And, um, um, I think the one that I'll bring up that I want to add, cause I have this issue with being afraid and being vulnerable, which ties into yours as well is don't listen to any negative criticism. Because if you are true to what feels and comes from your heart and you love it and you would put it on your wall, then don't listen to what anybody else says. That's all I'm saying. Because you will find your collector. You will find someone that loves what you do no matter what it is, whether it's a painting, whether it's collage, whether it's a craft. Someone's going to love it if it comes from your heart. So that's a, that's a big one that I wanted to throw out there for anybody that's listening. That's an artist. hundred percent. And that applies to art or life beyond, right? Yes. Like my art speaks to some people. It doesn't speak to everybody. Not everybody has to love it or appreciate it or enjoy it. And that's okay. And that's the same thing with going out in the world and finding your people, right? Yeah, exactly. But if you're not being authentic, if you're painting or acting in a way because you think that's what other people want from you, uh -huh. guess what? Then the people who are attracted to your fakeness right right aren't the people who are supposed to be in your life and the right. people who are supposed to be in your life for who you are right the people who are supposed to be your collectors right or your friends or whatever it is they can't find you right if you're not being authentic right so if you so get criticism yeah so if you get criticism you just say okay well that's not my person they don't like what i'm doing then that's fine that's okay they're going to like yeah, somebody else. They don't else's. have to be your person. Right? They don't have to be your collector. There's nothing wrong with them. They're right. just not your person. They're not They're your right. collector. Right. And, and okay. it, when I went to school, one of the, one of the art, art classes that I was in, they said, you're always going to find people that are better than you. And there'll be people <laughs> that maybe aren't as good as you. But you'll find people that like exactly what you're doing, exactly how you do it. And um, I wanted to say hi to a couple more people. Girl in the Curl Surf Shop and um, Dana Point joined and Brittany. Nice to see you guys here with us. And thanks for joining us. And um, before we, because it's getting close to your time, right, Laura? We have to jump yep. off. Yeah, just a few more minutes and then we're going to jump off. So okay, so tell, tell me what you're doing, what, what you're up to, what, what you've got coming up on your, um, on your site and what's happening. Right. Actually, right now I'm working on a gift. I've been probably being a little perfectionistic with this one. I have a new nephew who entered the world on Saturday. My sister oh. had a baby. So I'm excited. She had done an ocean theme in her son's nursery. So I'm just finishing up three paintings to go over his crib. And those are going to be my gift to her. And she knows about it. So it's not a secret, but okay. um I have just the most beautiful, precious new soul in the world that I can't wait to gift. Yeah. Um, and then also I'm working on some abstract pieces. And then the next thing I'm going to work on will be seabirds. Like the first thing I'm going to work on is a cattle egret with an abstract background. And I'm really excited to go to town on that and get going. I think I'm going to do some really large works with those. Oh, that'll be fun. I've been wanting to do just seagulls on the beach or those little, the little sand um, birds. I don't know what they're called. Oh, you probably yes. know. Yeah. I've been wanting to do those too. Cause I love yeah, it. But yeah. yeah. And you're working on lemons, right? Are you still working yeah. on your lemons? Yes. Anything? Yeah, so I did, I did do some lemons. I did some last year and they, um, my friends and family really loved them. So I'm working on a couple more. This one's not done, but I'll just show it real quick. This is like one of them. So I still have to finish this one up, but I've got that one. And then the other thing I did is I did this thing called deconstruction. So this is pretty simple, but what I'm going to do is make it feel like it's vintage or antiqued. So I haven't done that yet. And it's a little off from what I normally do with my ski seascapes and landscapes, but I'm only going to do them one time during the summer and just, again, just try it and see how it goes and um, see how they're received, but they'll only be available one time a year. So that's my newest thing that I'm doing. And then I'll go back to my seascapes because I can't help it. I love them so really? much. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Those are really joyful. Yeah. Thank you. So are yours. Right. Obviously that's why we connected. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, 
Absolutely. Let me see. I can give you a sneak peek of a yes. sketch that I did for my bird series. And yeah, then I probably have to hit the road. Okay. Sadly, because I'd love to chat with you all day. But this is a sneak peek of my sketchbook. Oh, my so, God. I love it. There we go. So there's my cattle egret. My favorite birds in the world are cattle egrets. We used to have them all around our house in Hawaii. Oh. which was very close to the ocean and they're so beautiful. So I can't wait to play with those some more. Okay. Well, that's exciting. I love how that looks. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. So I can't wait to chat more about this. Thanks for doing a live and having me come visit with you. I know it was fun to have you be my first one. I'm so excited. <laughs> thanks. I'm Laura. Honored. All right. And then, like you. I said, I'll, um, I'll send you this, but I'll also post it with our two links for our articles if anybody's interested in going and checking them out. And um, thank you, Laura, for coming on. Thank you. This was fun. It was great to see you. And I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Okay. All right. Bye, Laura. Bye. I'll talk to you later. Sounds great. Okay. I'm just going to sign off with everybody here. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you for hopping on and uh, this was fun I, i'm glad we got um people coming and joining us and we had a great time for our first one and i'll be doing it again in a month i'm not sure of the date but i'll i'll settle it down so it's like the same time every month okay and maybe laura will come back and show us her uh, her birds yes i gotta get <laughs> okay that'll be fun all right great. guys i'm gonna end it if i can do it right i don't know how <laughs> We're going to try. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can do it. Okay. Bye, You'll guys. Eventually. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> bye.